Welcome to Daily Flip episode number 15. Glad you're here. I want to give you a rundown of my day today. A lot of running around, going to and fro, some paperwork I had to do today. Um, had a few questions pop up on some of the older Daily Flips. Uh, one that's popped up a couple times, which we'll go over here in a bit, is how buy here, pay here works. Uh, the question was actually, do I do buy here, pay here? Do I finance my customers that come in to look at cars in house? And the short answer is no, I don't. There is a sign outside that someone else asked about. Actually, we'll walk out, I'll show it to you. Funny thing is, I'm actually probably about to take this down, but it says, ask about our guaranteed credit approval. So basically people come in and ask about it and then the opportunity to sell a car should arise from that. Uh, this system is a company called Credit Acceptance. They kind of are a buy here, pay here of sorts, except they're the bank. So when someone buys a car, buy here, pay here, generally the price, let's say for example, let's go look at these out here. Actually, if we were doing a buy here, pay here deal on this uh, Volkswagen Rutan, the price on the window is currently, as you can see, $69.97. Now if you go into a buy here, pay here lot, there isn't a price on this car. You walk in and you say, how much is the car? What the salesman does, he tries to get a feel for whether you're paying cash or whether you're financing. If he figures out that you're financing, he doesn't even talk price. He talks down payment and he talks monthly payment. So for this car, he would say, oh, monthly payment's probably gonna be $75 a week. Sounds better than $300 a month. They would try to figure out your down payment, what they could do. This car becomes a nine or a $10,000 car. So they mitigate their risk in the car by upping the price. And what would happen actually, we'll walk back inside real fast. When they do that, they're gonna put a lien on the car. I don't do any buy here, pay here, but every now and then, someone will be $500 short or $1,000 short, but I still have a good margin. So I'll say, well, if you could pay that in, a, I don't know, 30 days or so, you know, just come back, pay me the rest. I'll take care of everything. And so I will put my business, which is right here as the, lien holder and so when the title is processed it doesn't get mailed to the customer which in this case the customer his name is Carl so Carl bought a 1999 Cadillac DeVille from me um, Carl actually has not paid what he owes so I have Carl's title if Carl wants this title he has to come pay me the $500 plus it was right at 600 and something dollars total he owed me so when Carl pays the extra $600 I give him his title if Carl doesn't pay me the remainder, I keep the title. He can do whatever he wants with the car because I'm not gonna go repossess it over $600. It costs me probably $200 or so to have someone go get it. I'm not knocking on someone's front door. I've heard too many horror stories. Sometimes repossessions are easy if you have an extra set of keys, which I think we actually do. But a friend of mine, actually a friend of my dad, uh, told me a story. He repossessed this woman's car. He knocked on the door to let her know he was taking it, which normally they don't do. So as he was walking off the front porch, he heard footsteps, he heard doom, 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 and then nothing. And that nothing was because she was flying through the air, lands on his back, sticks a fork in his back. And so I don't want that to happen to me. So I'm gonna let Carl hang on to this. Hopefully he comes back and pays. And then what happens is there is a lien release right here. So I would then fill in my name, sign it, and put the date, hand in the title. He would own it then, he could do whatever he wants to with it. I've got four or five of these laying around that folks just haven't paid off what they owe. Um, for me, I don't ever finance anything that would be harmful if I don't receive it. So my profit margin was already hit that I wanted to hit and this was just gravy. So hopefully Carl comes back. If you're watching this Carl, you owe me 600 bucks. Um, so that's buy here, pay here. It's generally a very high interest rate. North Carolina state max, I believe is 29.99. So that's usually what you're going to pay. They're going to charge the most that they can. Uh, the company we deal with, the credit acceptance, I believe is right around 21%, 21.99. A lot of your subprime lenders, subprime meaning it's below what you would want. It's not the best credit, but it's not you know terrible. So they're usually going to be anywhere from 16 to 20 something. Buy here, pay here is just not the best situation. I'm not a big fan of it because you don't put people in a good situation when you jack the price of $3,000 and you charge them 30% interest. It's a, a mountain that a lot of people can't, you know, they can't overcome. When you sell it to them, you know, you're their hero because you got them in a car. Two years later when they come back wanting to trade it in and they still owe you know, $6,000 and they can't understand why, that's when they start realizing, wait a minute, this guy actually wasn't, you know, the knight in shining armor that we thought he was. I don't want that reputation. I just don't go that route. There's a lot of good buy here, pay here people that are very honest and straightforward and they do a really good job. It's just not something I'm interested in doing, which the credit acceptance 
is probably not something we're going to continue to do because I do like to advertise my prices because my prices are usually very competitive. When someone comes in and sees and see 6900 I can't use this credit acceptance company and still sell it to them for $6,900 because there are other fees and credit acceptance sets the price and it's just not the best deal for the customer, which is why that sign probably will come down here in a bit. I still have it as an option. If we need it, it'll be you know an ace in the hole. If someone can't get approved anywhere else, we can pull it out and have that. But we just get so much foot traffic in here um, that that sign brings in, but it's you know normally not customers that I can actually do anything with because their credit is so shot and they saw that and they were excited and I can't do anything and I ended up letting them down. So that sign may go away. So otherwise today, I made a quick list of a couple things we took care of today. We had a few mechanical things we had to resolve. There's a Mercury Mountaineer we have in the back. We got that out. We replaced the wheel bearing on the front passenger side. That took care of a roar in the front. If you ever have a roar in the front of the car, if you go left to right and it goes away when you're going, so if I'm going to the left, if it gets louder on the right side, you know you have a right side wheel bearing. The opposite would be true for the left side. So it got rid of that problem as well as an ABS light on the dash. The wheel speed sensor is built into this. There's a plug that comes off of it. That was bad, took care of both issues in one, which is nice. We still have something, there's a dent in the back. And there's something else, a seat. There's an uh, electronic seat in the back. The third row folds up and down with a push button. We still have to find that, which is really tough to find. Uh, we have a Jeep that we've isolated. One problem, uh, an 05 Wrangler I bought a couple weeks ago. O2 sensor was melted. It actually become unplugged, was laying on the exhaust system. That's a majority of our check engine light issues there. Um, then we had a customer bring in a car. When you sell a car at the dealership, um, sometimes people will have issues after the fact. Sometimes we're able to help them. This is a situation where when they were changing the temperature on the passenger side, it wasn't going you know, up or down. So it was stuck on AC. It's you know, cold right now, or cold-ish up and down. In North Carolina, it could be hot or cold. You, you never know. Um, but they couldn't change the temperature. So we replaced an actuator. Actually, it looked like, let me show you. Uh, looks like this. Whoop, and we're losing the camera here. Um, it looked like this. So what this does, this is a motor. There's the plug. It would mount inside the car. This here would be inside of a door. So when this turns, the motor inside actuates it. So they call it actuator motor. It turns the door and opens it and closes it, changes it from hot to cold. There are these that change it from panel to floor to defrost. Uh, if you ever have a clicking inside the dash and something's not working in the AC system, this is what it is. It looks really simple. It's only one, two, three screws. However, a lot of times they're in a place where you got to remove a lot of stuff. This one took about two hours. Sometimes you can get them out in half an hour. Sometimes it's a seven hour job. Those are not fun. I've got one in the back. We'll talk about in a minute that we're going to have something similar to that seven hour job, but there might be a shortcut. So we'll see. Um, Otherwise, I guess we'll walk in the back. I'll show you that one. It's a 98 Mercury Mountaineer. It's one that's been parked for a while. I actually drove it for the first time. And I say it's in the back. I actually forgot where I put it now. So we'll find it here in a second. Um, this is the one with the O2 sensor that was melted. I don't know if it's actually sitting. Let me see if I've... Actually, here it is right here. This is it. It was plugged in, but... This piece here had become unplugged, so it was laying down. This piece here used to look like this here. So as you can tell, there was a significant amount of melting, which exhaust gets really hot, so that's to be expected. But went from this to this, you got a new one coming. It's 1990 something on Amazon. So we saved $15 from what Advance would charge. That'll be your Friday. We'll take care of that. We're still waiting on our body work on this one. It's been kind of a downer having to bring it in every night because it's been raining. So that's our main issue there. This is the Mountaineer we did the wheel bearing on. Um, our other Mountaineer is right here. It's probably locked, but which I should have thought ahead on. No, it's not. So I'm gonna unlock the door. We're gonna walk around to the other side. We have an actuator on this one that is not allowing us to get out of heat, so. And of course, I'm getting a phone call right now, so I'm gonna silence that. It's my wife. I hope she's not watching this video because she'll know that I ignored her. Put that on vibrate. I feel very bad. Um, so inside of here, I'm gonna see if I can drop this down. If we can even see this, I'm gonna bring my phone out and actually shine some light up in there as I'm talking to hopefully do that. So up inside here, there is an actuator inside of that that allows this to change from heat to cool. The problem is, 
to get to it, you have to pull out this entire box. We did a heater core not long ago. We showed you some pictures, showed you, or we showed you what it looked like. It'd be the same job. We're not gonna do that. We found a YouTube video that hopefully will work. Uh, we'll follow up with you here in the next day or so. Maybe we had a chance to do it. We actually have to cut a square into this box. We're able to access that, so we should be able to actuate it from cold to hot. Um, thank God for YouTube. You might be watching this on YouTube, so you might actually find that video there as well. But if it works, we'll let you know. Maybe we'll post the video just so you can see what we did. So that's something that's coming up on this one. So we'll leave that there. Otherwise, this is coming in tomorrow. I'm gonna lock my door. Uh, this is a Mustang we've had for a while. Needs a brake master cylinder. Not the most, um, not the largest job, but it's just been something we've been putting off. So this hopefully will be front line ready tomorrow if everything goes according to plan. It's a 2008 with 130,000 miles. Um, and then we have the catalytic converter hopefully coming in this week for our 300. This will be one, two, if this Mountaineer is close, that would be three more on our front line. We have eight right now. So it's kind of the give and take from a car sales standpoint. You want to have as many cars available as you can, but you want to sell as many. So you want to dwindle that number down. So it's a, it's a battle. You want more, but you want less because you want to sell them. So our inventory is beginning to get back where it needs to be. Um, probably not going to the auction this week. We'll walk back this way. Probably not going to the auction this week. Um, maybe looking at one car. My wife likes the Porsche Cayennes. There's one there. It's a turbo, which I like. 450 horsepower, so that would be a lot of fun. I might go check that out if it were to go somewhere within a range where we could be, you know, maybe driving it for a year and then sell it and make money. So, uh, otherwise, that was my day today. If you have any follow up questions to anything that I mentioned, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you have not subscribed to this channel, why not? I mean, really, come on, subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you in tomorrow's daily flip. You guys have a great rest of the day.